So what are three things that doctors do that automatically start the healing process before you ever get any medication into your system? Well, these three things doctors typically do every single time. Now, I don't know how much of the pandemic has changed some of these things, but if you can incorporate some of this into your everyday life, you'll have a much better chance, I would say, because there's no guarantees, of staying healthy. You're gonna be doing things that help lower stress. And I think doctors do a great job of this. They're mainly doing it for diagnostic reasons, as I'll explain, but they're really, really powerful for the human body. So what are they? So number one is, is they always wanna hear you breathe. They get the stethoscope out and they put it on your chest, they put it on your back and they make you take some deep breaths. And let's just say you've had a, a chest infection or you've had a throat you know, problem and it's been difficult to breathe or it's been um, you know, annoying to, to take deep breaths. You've kind of been closed off or stomach ache. You're closing yourself down so that your, your lungs aren't functioning properly. When you're stressed and you're not feeling well, you're probably not <sighs> relaxed and having a good time and things like that, right? You're like, oh man, I don't feel good. All right, your body gets tight and all these types of things, right? Body aches. So when you just sit there and you just start taking deep breaths, which you might not have done because it might have been difficult to breathe, it might be painful to breathe, it might be uncomfortable to even just move your body in certain positions, taking those breaths automatically helps you start to calm down and automatically starts the healing process. Number two, one of the things that they do, again, I don't know if this has uh, changed since the pandemic, but at least when I would go to the doctor, they would always feel my lymph nodes, maybe even feel my head, feel certain parts of my body, scalp, things like that. Uh, you know, they're, they're inspecting you, looking at your body, you know, using tools to look inside your ears, but you're getting touched, all right? You're getting poked and prodded, but you're getting touched. And physical touch for human beings is so important. We're mammals, we're social beings. It's especially in today's day and age, so hard to live without other human beings. Some people can go out into the woods and survive on their own, but most of us rely so heavily on other people. So we're social, we're mammals. And when we don't get touch, we, I mean, if, think about it. When you, when you get touched, it's actually, they've done studies on this, it's actually analgesic, meaning it decreases the pain receptors in the body. It, it allows everything to relax and calm down. And so when you get a massage, it might be painful at the time, but you relax into it. It starts to feel good after everything is done. Obviously, if someone screws you up because they don't know what they're doing, but most of the time you go to the massage to relax, right? Um, you know, the ancient yogis used to talk about uh, a massage a day is required for health. Now, how do you get how do you get a massage every day? You got to give a massage every day. So if you have a partner, it's a really great, great thing because then you can give a massage and get a massage and it's this reciprocal thing. But even if you're, you're thinking, well, you know, my partner can't massage well, it's like just get them to mess around with your back and your neck and, you know, nothing too crazy. It's not supposed to be a sports specific professional massage, you know, massage, unless if that's your partner. But even then, I wouldn't suggest, you know, trying to get them to do that every single day. So it's, you know, it's, it's a couple minutes, you know, it's five minutes. It's something really, really, really simple. But that touch is so powerful. You know, since the pandemic started, we haven't had as much of the you know physical touch hugs and handshakes and kisses and all those types of things have been a little bit you know weary other cultures certain cultures they you know they are very touchy feely us in america and, and i think in in england and, and great britain and stuff you know not not so not so much so you know depending on your culture you might have not only not had a lot to begin with physical touch but you might have very few so be thinking about that when you're going around i think uh, you know, we talk about risks of spreading disease and things like that. Well, think about stress and what stress causes to the body. And if you can find ways of decreasing your stress, physical touch is one of those ways. It helps tremendously. And, you know, there was a book I, I, I read from uh, Dr. Robert Sapolsky out of Stanford, and it was about um, stress and how it affects every single system in the body. And there's research studies, and he does a good job of breaking things down um, and putting it into clear language, but tons and tons and tons of research done over and over and over again that affects the immune system, affects the nervous system, affects everything in our body. And I feel like we talk about stress, but 
It, uh, oh, and the book title is called uh, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. Very, very good book. Again, lots of, lots of research study, but again, if you can get through it, it, the big takeaway is stress affects us negatively in so many ways. And we, as human beings, have ways to combat that. Number one, we talked about breathing is so important. Breathing, meditation, we talked about the yogis, all right, and getting physical touch every single day. What were the yogis doing? They were meditating all day, right? So meditation, physical touch. And then the last thing, what do doctors do? They, they always have a solution. Now they might have not, they might not have an immediate solution. They might say, um, you're going to take this medication. Okay. You're going to, uh, we're going to refer you to a neurologist because this is actually what's going on. And once, once he sees you, he'll be able to diagnose you and you're going to be able to get more help there. I, I can't prescribe whatever it is that, that you're looking for. It might be, you know, something else, but we're going to figure it out. They always leave you with a sense of reassurance. If they're a good doctor, whether they can help you or not, they give you a self, they give you some reassurance saying, Hey, everything's going to be all right. We're going to figure this out. I'm here for you. So that sense, it's like a weight lifting off your shoulders because if you go into the doctor, you're probably going there because you don't know what's going on or you can't do enough by yourself to help the situation that's happening. So having that reassurance that everything's gonna be okay is very relieving. It's just like if somebody came to you and you had a big problem in your life and they said, oh, don't worry about that, I'll take care of that. Oh, thank you, right? It's like, you just took, I just took a deep breath, okay? So that's another indication of what would stress. You probably were holding your breath. I can't get this done, I can't figure this out. Someone helps me, oh, thank you. So breathing. You might even give them a hug. So there's all three, all right? <laughs> you got help, took a deep breath, and, and then you got a hug, right? Why do we do those things? They matter, they decrease our stress, they're super powerful. Now, if you have a problem, let's just say, and you're, you're an island, right? You're by yourself and you, you don't want anybody's help. Well, first of all, remember you're a social being, you're a mammal, you need help from other people. Put your ego aside and get help if you need it. But what people do, let's just say, if even if they are getting help, and, it, and the solutions aren't coming. What's one thing that people turn to is prayer. Prayer, and you, you don't have to be religious to pray. You can just ask whatever it is that you want for help. You can ask God or the universe or the spaghetti monster or whatever it is that you want to, to again, give you a little bit of reassurance, but it, it's more so it's having faith. When people pray, they're not saying, I mean, if, if they're doing it correctly, they're not saying, God, please let me win the lottery. It's more, God, please guide me. Please watch over me. Please, you know, give me the strength to deal with whatever it is that I'm going through because there's no guarantees in life, all right? God's been around in people's lives and people have had bad things happen to them. So it's not that it's a guarantee that God is going to make everything better, but asking for the strength, at, you know, saying, hey, please watch over me during these, these tough times. What that does is it gives it away to someone else. Right, it gives it up and it allows you to again decrease that stress response. They've done studies when they have people pray and they have people meditate, and the same exact things are happening in the brain. So, it can be a form of meditation for you again if you're doing it in that way. If it's just please, God, all right, and you're just asking for like, like you're asking Santa Claus for gifts, that's not what I'm talking about, and I don't think that that will translate to the same thing, you know, giving it away, saying. You know, hey, look, I'm going to do everything I can in my power, but please watch over me. Please guide me through these processes. You know, please let the people who do have the answers walk into my life. And having that sense of faith, again, is like a weight lifted off your shoulders. And again, these are three things that doctors do. Again, most of the time they're doing it because they're just doing their job. But I think they're so powerful. And if you implement them into your life, you will start to have less stress. You'll start to have more health. And maybe you won't need to go to the doctor as often or as regular. So those are the three things that doctors do well. Keep doing your thing, doctors. We need you. Very, very powerful. Very, very, you know, uh, important for our lives. And again, start to incorporate those things into your life and uh, you'll have some good results. Until next time, I'll see you then.